In this talk, we would like to discuss the purpose of life. And we want to do so by asking the three fundamental questions of life. Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going to? When we speak about the purpose of life, it may at first sound odd to connect this with three questions, which seemingly push us in a direction that makes us seek for an answer within time and space. The questions, where do you come from and where are you going to, are part of our everyday discussions. And within that common mindset, it is obvious to see ourselves as a product of the past, the sum of the qualities we received at birth and what became out of them during the course of our lives up till now. All the same, we then limit our existence to the time frame between birth and death, the two moments in time that separate this known state of existence from non-existence. This is in fact a discouraging background for trying to find any purpose that makes life meaningful. Or are we really supposed to do something with our lives? Do we have a certain assignment or mission to accomplish during our temporary presence on earth? Is it maybe our task to bring about something that is not subject to decay, something that transcends death? Maybe something intangible like a soul. Don't think of, don't think of soul as the consciousness of our nature-born existence, having an extended existence in the heavenly fields after death. Such a state would still limit us to the dimension of time. Moreover, for a soul, that has completely originated from experiences in and with the body, it would be like hell to live an everlasting life that lacks such a body. So, first we must find an answer to the question, who am I? For if we cannot accept the fact that we're just useless creatures that came about through a million year evolutionary process, completely guided by coincidence, then we are at least open to the possibility that we are more than that, that there is an essence, an essential meaningful principle connected with us. One that soars far beyond the limits of time and space set by our minds. If we are able to accept this, if we are willing to surrender to the idea that we are connected with another dimension that we cannot grasp with our consciousness, then we are already opening ourselves up to its activity, then we already realize that we are dual beings, that apart from a material I being, we also partake of an immortal existence. This immortal being is not an entity that began its existence in time and will continue everlastingly in time. No, it is a being that is subject to another time dimension, a dimension that is not time as we know it with our limited minds. It is the dimension that is often referred to as eternity. This other being, this immortal I, resides within us as a latent 
or dormant principle. It makes itself known to us through an undefined longing, a certain disquiet that triggers the simple question, who am I? As dual beings, we are now confronted with the possibility of two answers. I can be either by nature born I, or I can be that other one, the eternal being within, the being that helps us see our lives and the world from a completely different angle. We can find many references to this situation in the universal wisdom teachings throughout history. It has perhaps been expressed most clearly in the Corpus Hermeticum, supposedly written by Hermes Trismegistus about 20 centuries ago in Egypt. Hermes already stated then, of all the creatures in nature, only man is dual, mortal as to the body and immortal as to the essential man. So in answering the question, who am I? The decisive choice is, what do I identify with? What do we mean when we say I? Are we able to open ourselves up to the notion that we are potentially divine beings? If we can imagine that, then we can obtain the vision and the strength to make a profound change and give new deep meaning to our lives. Well, there are still many things to say about this, but we would now like to proceed to the next question. Where do I come from? Again, we are not talking about us as mortal beings who are born from a father and a mother. No, the question here is, where do I, referring to the essential human being, where do I come from? And again, we involuntarily direct our thoughts to the past to seek for the origin of the essential man. However, the historical past does not hold an answer for this immortal essential man did not originate from a genesis within our dimension of time. For example, the book of Genesis at the beginning of the Bible is not an historical account of the history of humankind. Instead, it is trying to make us aware of our true origin as children of God. The story is written as if it happened within time, for otherwise our minds wouldn't be able to follow it. But actually, it describes a development within another dimension, the dimension of eternity. Even the fall, which is the mythical way to explain why two so fundamentally different beings, one mortal, the other eternal, have been put together into one human microcosm. This fall was not so much caused by our so-called sins or by eating an apple from the wrong tree, but because of a free choice made by original human beings in the development process that takes place within the dimension of eternity. As 
divine beings, we decided that we needed the experiences of the spatio-temporal world. And that's what we got. Calling this situation a fall or a deadly sin is only a moral qualification that doesn't apply in the dimension of eternity. Hermes rightly called our field of life the training school for eternity. This description paints an exact picture of our situation as microcosms, as dual beings who take part in two worlds simultaneously, who are involved in two completely different developments. And if we want to put an end to this dual situation, an end to the tension and disquiet that it brings into our lives, then we must merge the two into one. Merging the two into one requires that one aspect devote itself to the other. The nature-born I being is a temporary inhabitant of the microcosm and will perish anyway. So his primary task is to devote himself as a servant to the eternal being within. Even to let himself be completely absorbed by it. In this way, man as a microcosm can respond to his true vocation being a mature child of God who can work for the salvation of the world and all of humanity. So now we come to the third question, where am I going? It is the question about our ultimate intention, the purpose of our life. What must we do when we have become aware of our state of duality? When we have discovered that there is a deep longing in our heart for sharing in a glorious divine development of our true self, what must we do? First of all, we can rejoice because we have woken up into a state of consciousness that makes our lives meaningful. Next, we can seize all possibilities to arrange our lives in such a way that this new state of awareness is kept alive. And then we can embark on our journey using the inside of our head and the longing for salvation in our heart. There are many stories of the quest that human beings must undertake to reach this goal. And all the stories agree on the point that everything that must be achieved is already present within us. There is no outside authority, person or book that can give us what can only originate from the inner spirit spark that resides in our heart. There in the heart lies the seed that already contains all the information necessary to allow it to grow into a mature tree. And the only thing we as I beings can do is to water this seed with the ardor of our dedication. And for the rest, try not to get in the way so that the divine light of love that pervades the entire universe can deliver the required energies to make the seed sprout grow and eventually bear fruit. Through the combined efforts of 
the nature born mortal being and the eternal original man from the beginning the dual being will become one equipped with all the powers that were granted to him as possibilities from birth the great mystic master Eckhart recognized this and wrote in his book the way to cosmic consciousness the child of God God's image is like a living source in the innermost depth of the soul however he who throws earth that is earthly desires on it obstructs and suffocates the source so that one can no longer perceive anything of it yet it remains alive within itself and when the earth which was thrown on it from the outside is removed it appears again the human being becomes aware of this light in the depth of his soul when he turns to his inner God and immediately a brilliant light appears in him and lets him know what he must do and not do end of quote the school of the golden rosy cross is formed by a group of people who have recognized this state of being within themselves. They have joined forces to explore together how to stimulate this inner process and bring it to fruition. Thank you for your attention.